Here we go. Hello, everyone. How are you all? Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be. My name is Regina Gong, and I am greeting you here from Michigan. I am the Open Educational Resources and Student Sex student success librarian here at uh, Michigan State University. And I am also a member of the um, steering committee um, for the open ed. This is our first time this year to do a community meeting. So we are really so excited to welcome you. And thank you for taking the time to attend this um, community meeting. Actually, we started doing this, I think, in June of last year. So that was like ages ago, right? <laughs> so we started doing this community meeting and really just to build, you know, um, this community because we are starting over, right? And so um, it was a really a good way for us to get to know each other and to really work towards reimagining what open education can be. And so I hope you were there during the um, first ever open ed um, conference that we had last year. And it was really historic, right? We had more than or probably close to 1500 attendees um, who, who came and attended our first virtual conference. Um, so we have we have the chance again this year to make uh, this year's open ed even better than than last year. So so today we're just really kicking off, um, you know, the fun. <laughs> uh, we just wanted to give you an update on what we are doing. Uh, members of the steering committee will talk about operations update. Um, we'll also talk about strategic planning um, updates that um, we have been engaging in or we are going to start to to engage in and of course our call for volunteers but before that we'll have something something really really fun to kick this off um, Lee is going to do that the great debate so take it away Lee thanks Regina so we're going to go ahead and do um, some minty, minty options here to, to kick everybody off. Um, just to introduce myself real quick, uh, Lee Miller, and I'm the Director of Innovation and Compliance at Barton Community College and also a part of the Steering Committee for Open Ed. Um, so if um, you want to go ahead and scan this, um, it is nice to be able to do it in a separate browser or a separate device. It does make it a little bit easier. Um, and then you just type in that code um, or you'll uh, click that scan and then there's also the option to do it directly in the chat. So go ahead and do one of those um, and we will get you get you started. Give everybody a second to do that here. And then we'll go ahead and go to the next slide and we'll get everybody kicked off while they're doing that. Winnie. Oh. Awesome. So I noticed that some people were putting stuff in the chat already. I saw one from Germany, which is amazing. Um, thank you for being here. Um, so go ahead and, and put <clears throat> where you're from. Um, you can put um, state, area, region, country. Um, let's see where everybody, it's nice to see that we have a, a big group here today. Lots of people from Maryland, Germany, see you, Colorado, California, Canada, Icon, nice. A couple <laughs> people. Tunisia. British Columbia, Texas. A couple different places for Texas. All right. Looks like it stopped there. So we'll go ahead and go to the next question, which is the great Cheeto debate um, that was started off last year. So if you attended Open Ed 20, you will recognize what this is. This was a, a big thing 
Um, so by all means, chime in and, and we can have a definitive answer among these 47 people on what the Great Cheeto debate is. Crunchy is leading the way. <laughs> Um, if you are not a gasp, <laughs> um, all Cheetos are coming close. None of the Cheetos, if you're not a fan. None of the Cheetos. We do have a couple people there. He is leading quite largely. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tiffany, we couldn't find the right Jeff for that. <laughs> And it looks like we do have a current winner. This obviously may change with the demographic, but it is well, uh, a, a good solid win by Crunchy Cheetos. So um, good warm up. We'll have some more mentee stuff. So we'll make sure to drop that chat just in case other people have chimed in here later, uh, but there will be other mentee questions um, uh, here in the next little bit of this meeting. And I'll turn it back over to Nicole. Awesome. Well, thanks very much. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Spencer wrote in the chat, it's funny what sticks from conferences and it's so true. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I should inform everybody that uh, Chester Cheeto has declined our invitation to keynote the next conference, um, but we will see <laughs> what we can do about adding Cheetos to the swag store without violating their trademarks. Um, all right, so uh, to kick things off, uh, for the year, we just want to give a little bit of an operations update. Um, I have a, a couple of things that I'm going to cover and hand it over to my colleagues. So next slide. Um, so for just a little bit of background on the conference, uh, I'm, uh, I guess I'm Nicole Allen, Director of Open Education for Spark, and uh, uh, wanted to uh, just take a quick step back uh, so uh, the Open Education Conference has actually been happening uh, for 17 and now 18 years, uh, but the uh, current incarnation of the conference is actually just entering its second year. So uh, at the end of 2019, uh, a group of four organizations stepped up uh, to support the conference for a two-year period uh, while it, go it goes through a transition to uh, becoming a truly owned a community owned and operated event. Um, those four organizations were my organization, Spark, OpenStax, the University of Sy System of Maryland's uh, Kerwin Center and the Colorado Department of Higher Education OER Council. So uh, we are here today uh, representing those organizations along with the wonderful steering committee and uh, many volunteers who in were involved in uh, shaping and supporting last year's conference and many who will be involved again this year. So as we enter our sort of second year of that two year commitment, uh, we will once again be supporting organizing the, the 2021 conference uh, as we did in, in 2020, but at the same time, will be working to support a strategic planning process that will sort of decide the, the future governance of the conference. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in, in a second, uh, but just uh, sort of letting everybody know what the operating structure looks like. It's gonna be um, you know, the, the steering committee, the four organizations and uh, a, a community driven process that we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute too. But first, I want to turn it over to Daniel to tell us a little bit about what to expect for this year. All right. Um, well, thanks so much. I'm Daniel Williamson. I'm the managing director for OpenStax. And OpenStax is ask, acting as the fiscal and legal lead for the conference. So basically, we signed the checks um, uh, and signed the contracts. So um, this year, I am excited that we will remain virtual. Uh, everybody loved the virtual conference last year. The team did a fantastic job really turning this into probably the best virtual conference I have ever attended. And so we thought, why, why mess that up? So save the date. Um, we will be having the conference October 18th through 22nd um, of this year. It will be virtual. Um, the proposal, call for proposals will be out by the end of April. Um, and then registration should be open by June. So everybody put it on your calendars, save the date, get your favorite bag of Cheeto, put it aside, maybe eat it because that seems like a while, but I'm sure they're indestructible. 
Um, and we will see you between now and then, but also we will see you October 18th through 22nd. And now I will turn it over to MJ, who is our quote, local host for this year. Hi, everybody. I'm MJ Bishop. I direct the Kerwin Center for Academic Innovation out of the University System in Maryland. And I was going to change my clothes before this call, but then decided, why would I do that? This is the perfect outfit for, for welcoming you virtually, at least, to the state of Maryland um, for the Open Ed Conference this fall, uh, October 18th through 22nd. Um, I think you're right, Daniel. It's been great to have this virtual vir done virtually. And man, what an amazing event last year that was uh, hosted by uh, Colorado. But um, you are going to miss the crab cakes. So I, you know, I do think I, there's a bit of a downside on this a little bit. But um, we're thrilled to to be able to provide some additional logistical support um, and to have been able to help create this bridge. Um, for the conference and for this community over the last couple of years. So thanks also to the great job Colorado did last year. Big shoes for us to fill, but we're looking forward to participating. And um, also huge thanks to Spark and particularly also um, OpenStax for making it possible for all of us to do this. Um, and, and for the risk to some degree that OpenStax takes on in, in being the fiscal sponsor here for the last couple of years. So thanks. Thanks to my colleagues as well. Yes, absolutely. And I guess I'm turning it over to Spencer. Great. Thanks, MJ. Yeah, super excited for, for the conference this year. Maryland themed. I think you had put in the chat there perhaps some Old Bay Cheetos. I'm thinking um, so we need to work on that. <laughs> sounds like something we should work on, certainly. Um, so just a little bit more information on the strategic planning process that's that's really happened with the community focus. Um, this is a group of community members and stakeholders began as the future planning group and are now working to establish strategic planning and governance model for this conference. And this is really driving the vision for sustainability uh, for this community and for this event in particular. So it's super exciting for open education, the conference, uh, but also for the field of open education as you all um, know it so i'm super excited about that work and, and as you know sustainability and vision executing visions and plans really important to maintaining uh, the momentum and the the progress and the growth in this field so um, this process as i mentioned is running march through september um, and has and has been brewing for some time now and haley has more information to share on kind of the commitment and um, some of the partnerships so Haley, kick sure. it over to you. <laughs> Great, thanks, Spencer. Uh, so I'm Haley Babb. I'm one of the project managers uh, at Spark. So I've been uh, helping to support our strategic planning committee uh, to, uh, I guess, kick off this process of, of figuring out, you know, what is the future of the Open Education Conference path this year. Um, so I'm very excited to share that we uh, have partnered with uh, Franklin Street Studio who is a uh, consultancy based out of uh, Denver, Colorado. And I'll just link um, a quick sort of announcement that we've put out about that. We haven't shared it too widely yet, but we uh, will be. Um, so we're, we're thrilled about this partnership. We're really, really excited um, for what they're gonna bring to the table to be able to sort of help us um, go through the process of env uh, envisioning, you know, like a mission, vision, goals for the organization, um, a strategic plan going forward. It's going to be an incredibly um, collaborative process. Uh, so keep an eye out for um, you know, invitations to participate uh, on our email list or via social media or wherever you can find us. Um, we are still very early days of the partnership. So we're still actually looking to plan our, our first kickoff meeting with the strategic planning committee. So more information um, and more opportunities to uh, submit your feedback on the future will be coming soon. So do keep an eye out for that. And I think that's all. Great. Yeah, and Winnie. Yeah. So uh, we have launched our call for participation. We have a call for committee members and just general volunteers for the conference. The interest form is already out on our website as well as being linked into the chat. Uh, the deadline for committee roles, so that's the um, uh, committee positions that will be playing an active part in uh, 
in, you know, behind the scenes of the conference is due on March 19th, so that's in seven days. Uh, and April 30th will be the deadline for proposal reviewers. So those will be the individuals who um, will review the call for proposals that we received this year and help determine what the program will look like for 2021. So that will be on April 30th. So you can check out the link in the chat. And I'll go ahead and pass it along to Amy. Hi everyone, I'm Amy Tan and I'm at Houston Community College where I'm the Dean for English and Communications. And we just wanna um, take a moment to get some feedback from the community and, and to think about the future of the conference um, as well as um, what you hope the conference this year will look like. So we have a few questions. If you wanna go to the next slide, we're thinking about, so for, so what, what do you want to get out of Open Ed 21? And we're, we are also thinking about, you know, moving as we move forward and the hope that we will be able to gather together, um, you know, maybe by the end of this year. Um, so what does that look like? You know, how do you see that? How do you envision that? Um, but also, you know, what, what do you want to get out of a virtual conference this fall? Um, so we, we are looking for some, some ideas from the community. And I see Cheetos is at the top of the list. I'm just waiting for wine to show up next. Models for sustainability, that is huge. That is huge. Long lasting friendships. Yes, the intersection of OER and DEI. So more social events. I really think that social events and the networking helped to create that feeling that we were together, um, even though we couldn't be in person. Um, best practice for the future of education, relationship building, networking opportunities, state of the field of OE, um, and maybe also thinking about you know, our relationship to um, the regional uh, OER, um, you know, how, how can we um, support that? How can we bring it in? You know, how can we work together, network? Let's see. Um, I saw something. Orgaritas. Yes, I am. I'm on board for that. Discord, bring Discord back. That was really an amazing find. Really, truly created. Um, that that social platform for interactions. I think the people who participated there really got a lot out of it. Um, I certainly learned a lot about Discord. How to and practical information. Sorry, sounds like my dog wants to um, have some feedback for you. Um, understanding how to incorporate OE into my life once I graduate. Fantastic. Third party resources. This is great. These are so, so wonderful. So keep them coming as we go on to the next question. Continuation of social justice theme. So what opportunities do you see for open education to have an impact? I know I'm gonna see, like this is where we really can make an impact on equity, social justice. I think, for many of us, that's the driving reason, you know, why we come to open ed is to is to have that impact on social justice and equity. Representation in research and course content. Yes, decolonizing the curriculum. Slow and resist the privatization of public education. Finding gaps in the open textbook market for sure. Yes, we, we, we talk about that a lot, how there's spaces where it's much easier to develop the OER and, and how can we support our colleagues who, um, who are looking for OER but, but don't know where to start, don't really have any have anything um, to build on. Expanding public education as a public good. Updated and relevant resources with student contributions, open pedagogy. OER can connect humans. 
definitely expanding to K-12. We really want to bring our partners in K-12. We want this, we want, we want, we want to have everyone at the table. We want everyone part of this conversation. Academic freedom, education as a social good, uh, a practical session on grant writing. I think that's a possibility. Open ed as a tool to dismantle the harmful legacies of higher education. Uplifting underrepresented people in PSE. Increasing students' presence. These are fantastic. More international connections. I missed it. It, it moved just as I started reading it. Lower barriers of entry for new members of the community. Absolutely. These are all, all wonderful comments and we're gonna um, be sure to review them as we do our strategic planning and as we look to start creating the program. Okay, and I think we have two more questions. So we really want to hear from you. What do you think the theme of Open Ed 21 should be? Last year it was reimagining. What, what would you like to talk about this year? What would you like to create as our overall theme? Okay, come on, somebody didn't put Cheetos? Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'll be serious. There it is, thank you. <laughs> um, equity for sure. Connection, it's all connected. That might be our tagline. The landscape of open ed with an S. Re-emerging, the public good, open ed E for everyone. It is okay just to be open ed. I think a theme helps center us, helps focus us, but we for sure um, wanna make sure that there's space for for all the, the perspectives and all the tracks and all the conversations to happen. Progression, perseverance, flipping the thinking of the academy, access and affordability, a second for it's all connected, open in action, open for everyone, Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to keep these in mind as we as we're talking about the program and our strategic planning. So our final question. What else would you like to say? What would you like to share with us? What do you want us to know? Nicole? I saw you unmute. Did you want to say something or are you just prepping? Oh, no, I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I think for this, um, you know, for this question, we just want to leave space for anything um, uh, a anybody here would, would like to, to say. This is a open space. Pets of open ed round two. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you must start your cat conference sweater collection. Absolutely, we are absolutely involving students in the planning, presenting process, announcements on that forthcoming. I think everyone here, um, thank you for taking this on. I think everyone here would tell you that this is um, one of their favorite themes, right? For me, it's, uh, I, I'm actually looking forward to, to when I can step away and I can be part of this group. So um, thank you for being here and, and for, for contributing to the process because it can't happen without the community. Still love the decentering from open ed stars with keynotes, et cetera, as we discussed last year. Focus on closing the digital divide, please. Okay, I saw something about keeping the program uh, better curated. Okay, not overly stuffed. 
Can this group help normalize open ed? Definitely looking to include more K through 12 voices. Excitement. Yes, the best virtual conference ever. The sequel coming to you. Um, let's see. Pets of education. And more outreach to K-12. <laughs> more Cheetos. Was that supposed to be M? Oh, E R. <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we definitely need to work on getting a, um, some relationship with Cheetos going. Micro credentials. Okay, long term sustainability of the conference. What happens after this year? Definitely. And, and that's if you if you have time to check out the blog on the strategic planning, you can read more a little bit more about that. But this year's focus is is on planning the conference, but also on what is the future of the conference? How should it be structured and who should be um, responsible for what part? And, and so those are those are conversations that will happen this year. So look for more information on that. Okay, this is wonderful information and we really appreciate all of you coming to, to share your voice and we take it seriously. And I will pass it on to, um, I forgot who I'm passing it Winnie. on to, to Winnie to wrap it up. Thank you, Nicole and Winnie. Well, the next meeting, the next community meeting, we'll be gathering some more feedback from the community on the sh uh, direction of Open Ed 21 will be on April 9th at 1 p.m. EDT and 1700 UTC. So we'll send out a reminder, but this will be when the next meeting is. And we also have all of our social media active at Hey Open Ed, and our official hashtag for Open Ed 21 will be hashtag Open Ed 21. So, if you have thoughts from this meeting, things you want to share with us, or starting want you want to start a conversation, um, use the hashtag Open Ed 21 and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Excellent. Great. And so I think that's a wrap on the sort of official programming of this meeting. We are conscious that uh, it is the Friday before spring break for many people. So <laughs> we don't wanna keep you longer than next necessary. So um, I'm gonna pause the recording here.